giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Which we have the U.S. North region. So kicking off, we have my home state of Iowa. So we've done a lot of talking about the powerhouse teams in Iowa. 113-16, the weapons of mass construction, rebuilt in the three weeks between Super Quals and State. 104-35, the circuit breakers made a bunch of small improvements, worked on their intake some, and made their arm just wicked fast. And then 72-29, the BZ bots and 72-36 both made additional just small improvements. So division split in Iowa wrecked some havoc on these teams. Um, of those four, two teams focused on the depot side of the lander, both 7-2 XX number teams, while the other two, 104-35 and 113-16, focused on the crater side. Of course, both depot side robots ended up in one division, both crater side's robots in the other, which made some interesting strategic plays before state. So 72-29 switched their focus and said, we're going to be a creator robot now by 7236, really just focused on that depot. So, man, it was really, it was interesting. A lot of strategy happened before state on both mm -hmm. sides. Um, after qualification matches ran through the morning, we watched the two big dogs in the gold division just rock all of their matches. 113.16 ended up ranking first, while 104.35 ranked fourth. Um, which left 113.16 with an interesting decision because realistically, 104.35 isn't a great depot robot um, just because they're really focused on crater. So they could probably score more with a really dedicated depot robot, but 104.35 can get 35 minerals by themselves. So do you pick 104.35, score a little less, and not have that competition? Or do you pick the team that you're sure you'll score more with? So, as you can see from the match video, they fixed circuit breakers and cat mostly swept their division. They had a couple tough matches against Cybots and Wired Up specifically, but it was it was crazy. So, so let's see. Yeah. Ethan, how is uh, Cybots doing this year? They had a really good good robot last year. They did pretty well. They advanced off the Innovate Award from the Iowa State Championships, so they made it to Worlds, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. were a division finalist first pick in the gold division. Mm -hmm. So they did oh, pretty wow. darn good. Do they have a swerve? They do not have swerves this year. They're just Oof. McDonald's again. But they're a pretty traditional double lift. I don't think I have a video of them hanging around. Um, over in the black division, just about everything went as expected. Qualification matches landed BZ Bots 7229 first and 7236 one loss behind them. Um, 7229 formed the 72XX alliance joined by Norwalk Robo Warriors Gold as their second pick, um, which was kind of crazy because they averaged the sixth most in their division by themselves. Um, in the and the 7-2XX Alliance ended up winning their, their division. So in event finals, we had some really close matches. Um, finals won the Red Alliance, so the Gold Division won by just about 60 points. Finals two. The, goal, the, oh, the back division, excuse me, <clears throat> won pretty handedly just because of the caliber of second picks. There was a big difference in the competitiveness of second picks division to division. And then match three was decided by 30 points after Team I Mentor had their hang bro break. So good job. It's the gold division of 70, let's see, excuse me, 113.16 and 104.35 for their win. Over in the Inspire category, 88-13, the Winter Soldiers took home their second Iowa State Inspire Award in a row, making them the first Iowa team to win Inspire twice in a row here. Um, Mortal Kombat's from Davenport, their second pl place Inspire Award, and My Own Kiddos on 72-36 took the third place Inspire Award. Oh, sorry about that. Um, Ethan, <laughs> what, was your, um, what was your hang made out of that it broke? Was it 3D printed? It was. Um, oh, okay. And it was fine for 53 matches before that. Uh, <laughs> but state finals, it actually broke twice. So Wow. I think it's it also is. interesting to see a lot of these teams that are like winning Alliance, they're getting second, third, even first Inspire often. And it's mm -hmm. more prominent than it's been in the past. I think a lot of the good award teams have also picked up and brought a good robot to the field. And I think the other way around to um, just... If you want to advance, if you're sure you want to get to Worlds, it's worth the time investment and making sure your presentation is good. 
making sure you have good people in the pits. And so you said um, uh, 10435 actually did uh, 35 minerals in Crater. So why did uh, Weapons of Mass Construction choose to stay Crater instead of um, taking Depot? So Weapons has a 40 to 1 drivetrain, which basically okay. is what it boiled down to. Um, right. 10435 could score more than them on Crater, but mm -hmm. 11316 scored a lot less than 10435 on Depot. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, that makes sense. It, it's an interesting, I thought that through too. I was like, what will happen when this happens? So yeah. Um, over in Illinois, we've seen some really solid competitive growth year over year. We have the few all-stars going in. First and foremost, 10091 Nyan is always big. The, I think they've been good for every year I've been in FTC. Um, sharing the Solomon division, we had 10138, the Newton Busters. And then over in the Cooper division, I had my eye on... 14615 turbocharged, rolling up with some very competitive scores at their league championships. And sharing their division, we had 10635 unknown element and 13197 Teslas. Lastly, 6187 Vertigo. So we had a lot of high quality teams over in Illinois this year. Um, something I like to highlight about Illinois is that the Cooper Division finals were crazy. Like finals one had a score of one. Four, or 459 to 454. Like, it's so close and also really high scoring, which is fairly rare to see two really high scoring matches in the same match. Two high scoring alliances in the same match. Cool. So, after the dust settled in their divisions, we had the Cooper winners of 146 15, turbocharged, and 10635, and our host Nathan's team. 3507 Robotheosis as the winning alliance over there. And the Solomon Division, winners of 1091, 10635, and 14614 Electro. So at, we had some pretty darn fierce matches in Illinois' finals. We can see one playing right now. And a lot of really, really quick robots and a lot of interesting robots. Um, none of these jump out to me as the same robots I'd see anywhere else, which was really cool to see. What How do you guys many think? teams advanced? How many teams advanced from uh, Illinois? I believe they had 10 advancement slots. Oh, wow. Pretty sure. And they have just about 200 teams in Illinois. So it's a fairly big state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. I know both, both winning alliances from their divisions mm -hmm. advanced. And we had, let's see, our Inspire Award winners were Team 6287 Vertigo, who was also a finalist alliance in their division. 7129, their alliance partner, the Robo Raiders were second, and 5037 Got Robot, who I've always loved because they wear kilts. Next up, I believe we have a behind the bot. So the behind the bot video our very own host Nathan did on team 14615 turbocharged. I'm Nathan Satterfield. I'm here for Fun FTC at the Illinois State Tournament. We're here with 14615 uh, Turbo Charge. Uh, so this is uh, David and Alex. Uh, they're going to tell us about our robots, about their robot today. So, um, what's your favorite part of your robot? I know you were My talking about your part, screwdrive. Yeah, screwdrive here. So we can fire it up here. Basically, it works. You have the thread on the screw on a motor mounted vertically, and so there's a little block in here that's got the thread in it. So when this screw spins, it pulls down this entire hook. You can, uh, pull it down. So we will latch onto the next, the uh, lander, pull the whole robot up. That's pretty awesome. Then you were telling me about your uh, your gear mechanism yeah. for your uh, linear actuator. Gear drive here. Gear drive. Which, yeah. uh, we can. I, yeah. So this one works when we have the linear slide go out with the bucket. Then this motor right here spins a small gear into this bigger gear, and that lifts it up. It gives it a lot of power and just stability. Yeah. Then can you guys uh, tell us about your uh, switching mechanism over here? Uh, we wanted to have, instead of having multiple autonomous that you can pick from on the phone, we wanted to have just one autonomous. And these switches work at if statements in the code, so that when you switch them, it will switch different lanes and stuff. Uh, lanes. We program these different lanes into the code. So basically, the robot can follow different paths in autonomous based on which switches are hit. 
That's pretty awesome. Um, so this won't air until uh, after the state tournament. Do you guys have anything you want to say? Do you want to make a little prediction for how you think they're going to do? Uh, not, not totally sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't want to jinx it too much. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much, and uh, good luck to that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so an awesome interview we had. That about wraps up Illinois State. Next up is North Dakota. They're a pretty small, often invaded state with just two advancement slots. Um, we don't see very many open states in the North region, so it's cool to see. Um, the advancement slots went to a one-man team, one one eight seven three parallax shift, who won Inspire, which, and I believe he's the only one-man team to win Inspire at a state competition. And... 9168 Thunderbolts for being the winning Alliance captain. Next up is Minnesota State. We have always really, really strong awards teams and some really strong robots too. We let's see. We saw a bunch of scores just about hitting 400, but nothing quite breaking. We the winning Alliance captain for that event was 12528 Next Gen, 3763 Piece of Cake, and 113. 01, the Mustang Gear Gang. Um, in Inspire category, we had Team 7190, the Green Girls, 10273, Cat in the Hat comes back, and finally, the third place Inspire went to 9890, the Rubies. So all pretty names we all know from Minnesota. They do it good every <clears throat> year. So that went pretty well. Over in Indiana, uh, we haven't had their state championships quite yet, we had one really notable qualifier um, appearing there was 12835 Pixelated and 12231 Warrior Tech, who scored 512 with penalties or 472 without penalties in finals one of the Arrowhead qualifier, which was really impressive. And something that interested me just looking at the scores was the next match, finals two, was sub 200 points, and then the third match was just about 230. So there's a big jump from 472 to 190 to 230. So I'd do like think, to see what happened there. Do you think like one of the robots broke or? That that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. um, at that event, the Arrowhead qualifier 9862 Control Alt Destroy won the Inspire Award, and I'm hyped to see how Indiana State shows shapes up, and that's on March 16th. One um, of the funny the things about some state championships in March 16th is promote and compass awards are due for Detroit on March 15th. Oh. <laughs> so that's, <All> right. <laughs> um, if any teams watching that haven't qualified yet, I would just submit. And then mm -hmm. if you make it, then great. If you don't just PSA. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Next up, we have the Nebraska Stout South Dakota joint state championships, which is another two slot state, but unlike South Dakota, North Dakota, or unlike North Dakota, South Dakota, Dakota, Nebraska is closed. So only local teams can compete there. We saw several just above 200 point matches with 12959 Electrogator Robotics and Team 14088 Team Plus Plus winning the event. It had less than 22, 21 teams there, so they only had two teams per alliance. And Team 13426 Caffeinated Robotics taking the Inspire Award. So our last two events I'm really excited to talk about and are where are we going to see some really nice North region action? So the Wisconsin championships, I've had my eye on three big teams in particular. Team 4106, the Supposable Thumbs, Team 9956, the Knack, and unsurprisingly, Team 8680, Crack and Pinnin. So after pole matches, we saw one robot shine above the rest, rocking a 339 OPR. 8680 ended up first seed, giving them their choice of alliance partner. Um, with Wisconsin only being two slots, it meant that the winning alliance captain and Inspire Award advanced and nobody else. So in those cases, we see a lot of alliance captains decline the invitation of other alliance captains <coughs> because that kind of just throws away their chance at advancing. In this case, 8680 invited 9956, the NAC who accepted being sixth ranked, and then had 1-1... 490, the Muffin Tanks, as their second-ranked alliance. Who picked up 4106, Disposable Thumbs? Back up to the draft order, we had 8680, picked up 10686, Phoenix, and 11490, selected 
13182 Lab 29 as their second pick. So we're watching finals two right now, um, which was a pretty crazy matchup. We see 90, the Knack and Kraken Pin both taking from the same crater. And something that's weird about the Knack's robot is that it never moves as well, which is pretty common. Like you can see, Kraken Pin and really doesn't ever drive. But the Knack is kind of a secondary robot and also really never drives around. I have a, this is like the only robot I've seen this whole season that's like a diagonal depot bot. And I think that's like re- going to be really useful at Worlds, which mm-hmm. I mean, yes, they're going to have to be taken from the same crater as their alliance. But like, I mean, you're just not in the way of anyone. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. One of the things I found interesting was that um, the Red Alliance didn't play supposable thumbs, even though they got very, very consistent during the finals and they were scoring very, very high. Um, the knack is also incredible, um, but they were getting stuck on crack and pinion. So yep. I think when it comes to World's Alliance selection, it's going to come down to they're going to have to practice with that team that <laughs> wants to pick them before the matches and mm-hmm. uh, before selection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Um, another thing to notice is the knack went back and started hanging at about 56 seconds left. So I'm not really sure what happened there, but that's all right. Then we have mm-hmm. crack and pin in just score until I think it's 12 second mark. And just last minute hangs. Next up, we have the Ohio Championships, which I was excited to watch for a while. A few teams that I, in particular, wanted to see were 50-40, who we saw back in December as the winning Lions captain at West Virginia, and the Inspire Award winner there, 10307 Sigma. Um, I was also really looking forward to seeing 8719 Quantum Leap, and of course, 5029 the Power Stackers who is just an incredibly weird, really cool robot this year, um, which they kind of always do really well. So during Alliance selections after quals, we saw 11095, the loose screws ranked first. Um, due to a lot of Wi-Fi hotspots and weird disconnects, rankings were a little bit screwy at Ohio. Um, they first picked team 13172 Centipede, who's rocking 240 OPR in quals. Then our second ranked alliance consisted of 87, 19, and 50, 29, which left our third alliance, 10307 Sigma, was the alliance captain who first picked 50, 40. So it's interesting to see both those robots who are traditionally really, really big dogs in Ohio wait until the, fourth, the third ranked alliance to get picked. And a lot of that could have been down to just disconnect issues, but I'd like to see that there. So eliminations were quite a ride. In semifinals, Loose Screws and, Centip- Loose Screws and Centipede knocked out the fourth-ranked alliance, moving them up to event finals, while 1030's alliance squared it off against 8719's, which was some really close matches as well. 1030 and 5040 ended up just barely taking the win there and moved on to event finals, so, which were definitely something. Um, so we had in finals one, it's one of my favorite matches. Um, we had 50 40 disconnected a lot. And the weird thing with their whatever issue they were having is they would disconnect, then come back for 30 seconds, and then disconnect for 30 seconds, and then come back. And they did that about four times. Ended up scoring one cycle after autonomous and didn't do much else. So in the last, I think it was 15 seconds of the match, 1030 scores a cycle pushes 50-40 into the crater to get parking points and then hangs and wins by, like, five points. So they won because they pushed their alliance partner into the crater. And then that ended up winning them the state championships. So just some crazy last-minute decision-making and really fast driving led to a win by the Blue Alliance, or the third-ranked team. Wow. That's, and that's, two that's teams amazing. who already advanced. It was an incredible match to watch, and I know, like, the crowd was booing, why are you hitting a robot? But I don't think <laughs> people immediately realize mm-hmm. that their decision, co- it mm-hmm. won them the match. It did. It was... It, shush. It so has intense. Seven Sigma is, like, one of those really strong teams that doesn't extend in? Like, do you guys, mm-hmm. does anyone know, like, if they're planning on keeping that design, or are they going to have, like, an extension for Detroit? I think they plan on keeping it. But uh-huh. don't well, I mean, I was just looking at the cycle times right now, and they were averaging seven to eight second cycles. So mm-hmm. that's really all you need, in my opinion. Right, right, uh, right. 
but they're not slow. And it gives them, they're in an interesting position because they have, they're great on depot because they're right. a huge robot who's all driving into the crater. So defense is crazy. But also mm-hmm. it's hard to see what you're doing when your robot is a big black box. Yeah. So they're in kind and of I mean, funny... if, if we look at their intake, right, their intake is like a three stage intake that yep. I presumably can collect more than two minerals, right? Um, it, and how can they tell that, uh, or do they basically have a, p- a passive system to get rid of those? So, um, I talked to them last year after MTI or during the MTI event. They're an incredible control team. Like I think they got yeah. an, a control nom at uh, Worlds, but I'm pretty sure they have some sensors in there that prevent them. Mm-hmm. And they've definitely got LED light feedback, so <laughs> wouldn't be surprised about that. Absolutely. For sure. To, to my knowledge, they do have that... Um, passive software base sort so they can only intake two Mm -hmm. it looks like we have finals three up right about now and yeah you can see i'm not sure it looks like 5040 also had some intake extension issues but would just disconnect and then wait a little while and then come back Ah. and i'm it's an issue that i have as an fgaa hasn't have an experience so it could be something weird but yeah interesting thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud live and independent Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.